Hey, this is Christian Buckley, and thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'm a Microsoft uh, Office Apps and Services MVP and Regional Director based in Lehigh, Utah. I'm here with Noah. Noah, Noah Sparks, checking in from Springville, Utah. We had a wonderful Memorial Day yesterday, checking on the pioneer ancestors that I have in the area. Woohoo! That's right. You're way down south of me. What about 45 minute drive? 45 minutes. Yeah, that's all right. And we have Mark slightly further away than 45 minutes. I think four yeah, just and a half little hour drive. There. Just a little drive. Just just a little bit more towards the west. Yeah. I be looping in, in this Utah good, just bringing in a little bit of. Uh, but yeah, I'm Cashman. I am a senior product manager at Microsoft, focused on a couple of things, but for days. I am our lead product marketer for Microsoft Lists. Uh, and in my wheelhouse, I also focus on the SharePoint content server of Microsoft Teams and a lot of what we do for administrators and migrating content to the cloud. That also is in my wheelhouse. Yeah, there's a lot of you. You've got the smorgasbord of uh, responsibilities now of uh, these different pieces. But there's a lot of th this new stuff like the, the list, as Noah and I were talking about before we started mm -hmm. recording. I mean, there's... Uh, I know a lot of questions out there, a lot of cool things uh, about it, but uh, I know maybe you could start off with a high level for people who haven't taken a look at the plethora of, of uh, resources that were made available and videos and things. How could you not have watched that stuff yet, people? Come on. I mean, be a high level. Thing. Well, I, I, yeah, if, if I can just share a couple of slides, uh, yeah. I promise not to give my whole Microsoft lists pitch, but you can interrupt me at any time, and I've always got a couple of things based on questions we might turn to. Um, but give me one second, and I will get PowerPoint working for us here. And you tell me when you can see what you're supposed to see, and tell me see things you're not supposed to see. Uh, so there Microsoft Lists. Microsoft Lists is a part of Microsoft 365, and really one of the things that have been most commonly frequently asked questions it, and then I'll kind of end on where I guess you're going to have one or two immediate questions. Of course, uh, this is something that we, this is something that we announced at Microsoft Build, so it's very fresh, um, and it really is an evolution of what we've been doing for years with SharePoint, SharePoint lists. And so I think the most important thing to think of list was a lowercase L SharePoint. Now it's a uppercase L Microsoft, and it really does bring it to uh, more places than SharePoint. Um, but if you go to the top level, Microsoft Lists is a smart information tracking app within Microsoft 365. Go into Microsoft 365 in the future when we release. We're just now at disclosure. You would see a new app, a new icon for lists. As you click into it, you would at home and abilities, but really building on that foundation that has been SharePoint lists for quite some time and making sure that you can create in Teams, you can consume in Teams, you can go to your list homepage and uh, consume and create from there and the things that I'll show you in just a second. But we do um, want, want to really reach a broader set of people more than just uh, SharePoint. If you think about part of our job, creating and using lists a little bit more simple. Uh, so they're easy to create. You can be mindful with what you create them for and not worry so much about the device that people are interacting on. Um, we really do want to position them as being smart so that as you're tracking and managing information over time, the life cycle of managing physical devices, different um, team assets, certainly different information, like think about the SharePoint conference, 350 sessions and all the things that go along with planning and have that built into your collaboration efforts so that it's easy talk about lists. It's easy to talk about individual list items, but it's really the content that you get to uh, and make sure that the right people have the right access at the right time. And as things change, the list changes as well and becomes visual to support that and that it's flexible so that it looks like how you want it to look like. You see a couple examples here. And as I click through a couple of slides and I'll make sure I promise not to just do my standard uh, demo pitch here. Um, that you really see that lists are as you want them to be. Track the information that you need to track, people that you need to track with, and make it as visually engaging so that you can see what's right, what's wrong, what needs to be updated, uh, uh, and and manage it that way. 
Um, so a couple of the new things. This is Microsoft Lists Home. I hope you heard about this. Did you guys see this and kind of get your head scratching like, oh, okay, that's new. That's your point. I did anymore. see it, and I, that's one of my questions about that. We'll circle back to that. Yep. Yeah. So think of this, both the web and what will be later this year for mobile is an aggregate of all of your lists. So this is lists that I create and own, lists that maybe I brought into or I'm a part of a team. So this is an asset just like we share files, we're going to share lists and the list items. But this is where I would go to see everything that I am active on um, that doesn't exist today. If I had to manage across even just two lists, I most likely would have to go to the team site, go into site contents and then find the list. This really up levels the value of lists and shows me everything that I'm active in. Yeah, beyond just kind of the main highlight points here, I've just got a short video that gives you a sense of what this will look like, not only to go to lists, the home, but to actually uh, create a list and how we're building off of templates, how we're building off the value that's already there. So you can already create a list from Excel, create a list from a list, or like you see here, building off of a template like the event event itinerary. Um, this gives you a little preview of what you get. You get kind of this, I'm gonna pause for a second because I think this is an important templating no matter what you're templating. But with lists especially, you get a look and feel, you get a column or data structure, and then in terms or flows or essentially rules that go along with the template, those flow in as well. The page here is you essentially can get started pretty quickly with a structure that's been predefined. Um, you choose where you want it to go, so you can have your own list or you can make it for your team. And then when you create it, again, pausing here just for a moment, you get a sense of you're working with data and to do, uh, you know, pull down, drop down information. You can free flow, type it in. You can pull information from your global, global address list for people and, you know, if you you know the value of what you can do, um, but we maintain all the value that's over this connection to Excel, the ability to make an app if you wanted to, and the ability to take it further um, from a workflow or business process perspective. Um, so next pitch point, which is sort of like two, uh, is List Mobile. So this, to be real clear, is something that's not going to release initially. So we have talked about and signaled that we're going to get started with re releasing Microsoft Lists later this summer. But we know the work that we have to do that the List mobile app will be later this year will encompass a lot of what I just showed you. You'll be able to create new lists with templates, create rules, get notifications, obviously engage on the different lists, share them, edit list items, send unique list items as a share so that people can give you feedback on things that granular. Um, and we'll start first with iOS and then a fast follow to Android. Um, and then last that I'll pause on this is the inherent value of Teams as a hub for teamwork is inclusive of a lot of apps and, of course, for us, a lot of different content types. Uh, and not to get too geeky too quick, it already plays a big role in Microsoft Teams. And it's really what we've positioned around already, lists, pages, news, and you've probably seen some of the other announcements broader to sites and portals. Um, but our real goal here is to make sure that when you work with a list in Teams, it's a great experience. And the difference with today versus tomorrow with Microsoft Lists is you'll actually be able to create, share, edit, view, do all of this starting in Teams and staying in Teams. So there will really be a new Lists app takes advantage of what's already today, which is being able to bring in an existing list, but really be that so that you can get started to create. That same thing I showed you on List Home is that same experience that you would do from within List to get started, or of course, once you're working in it, that you can filter and share and create rules, do everything you would expect you'd want to do, but, but never leave Teams. So those are my three main highlights. I've got more, but I don't want to overrun with slides, questions, comments, curiosities. Well, this, I, and I don't know if Noah, if anything came up from that, I've, I, I've got a few. Okay. But, I did uh, not notice the template for ancestors. I know that's not work related, <laughs> but that's immediately what came to mind. Could I keep track of all my ancestors? You can keep track of pretty much anything that, that may be a little bit more of a consumer play, but if you want to track your ancestors, work for Ancestry.com. 
one work item that I took on with new Microsoft lists internally is, you know, a lot of times when we do a reorg for the office division, you get a PowerPoint that shows, you know, who the different managers are and who reports to who. And it's a wonderful, beautiful PowerPoint, but it's oftentimes then lost as information in a deck that you may or may not remember to get back to. And so I recreated some of that structure as a list that basically says, who is Mark and who is your report to? And is who, who does his manager report to? And, and we know that as a address list, right? But the thing that's always missing is who works on what? So Mark works on Microsoft lists, SharePoint plus Teams, migration, admin. And very often, if I didn't update that in my profile or it changes, uh, to find those people, especially when you work within the same team, maybe one or two partner teams over. Um, so anyway, maybe not ancestry, but pretty close. And those relationships are easy to, to create lists. They're easy to visualize. And of course, when it gets to then filtering, who all not reports to grandpa, but maybe is is under that part of our tree branch or our family, I can totally visualize it. That's a brilliant use case. <laughs> well, if you, if you want to build that list and then share it with the community. I'd love to see it once you get there. It's, it's yeah. very easy to put together. As long as all parties are, uh, you know, willing to be made public, you can always blur out different branches of the family tree if they're a little bit less prone to being social. Well, Mark, there, there were a couple of questions with the announcement with Build. I mean, I saw uh, a, a couple of themes appear within the community. One of the first yeah. questions most common was, you know, does this replace my need for building SharePoint lists? So that legacy application SharePoint that's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, does it replace the need, or do they sit by side by side? Am I, am I, so how do they work yeah. together? Yeah. We really tried to position it as an evolution of SharePoint lists. So if I go into a SharePoint team site today and after Microsoft List is released they will be the same product. There really is only one product in market and, and in the future in, in the marketplace. Um, we just up-leveled it to Microsoft List because you have touch points that are beyond SharePoint uh, and or are aggregate, but really the experience is to be common and so that uh, not even similar, but the same. So if I were to go to a SharePoint team site and click new list, I'm effectively going to be able to create in this new way if I had an existing list today in SharePoint, that will just get additional capabilities, maybe a change of look and feel. The real short answer is SharePoint lists and Microsoft lists have the same common backend, which is SharePoint. Uh, a list is a list is a list, and SharePoint lists will get additional capabilities, but if you have existing investments in SharePoint lists, those will only get better. And for a lot of people who aren't maybe fluent with SharePoint, they'll be able to access and use lists in a new way, but really built on that same value of backend. Um, they aren't different. We only have one list product in Microsoft 365 and in the marketplace from Microsoft. Uh, and they're really being built to be an evolution of each other. I, I still think we're going to, it's inevitable. We're going to hear people referring to them as classic lists and modern lists. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be real clear, there there will be still, and we've been we've we've tried to be clear about this, that there today before, before Microsoft List was announced, there was the notion of a classic list, and we were modernizing lists. Yeah. But from a what is a modern list, that is only going to become you know what we carry. We will still support classic lists, the real classic list. Uh, there's a lot of line of business applications built on it. There's a lot of tensions and customizations made to it. Um, but if you're able to move to the modern, that modern experience is really what we're building on today and going forward. And does the app, the homepage for the list, does that really only surface those new modern apps? Or because I didn't see, uh, and you didn't mention whether, you know, in, in my recently accessed lists, if I have those classic SharePoint sites, is a way of surfacing those also within that homepage? It's everything. So okay. the answer is yes. It's it's if you have a list that you've created or are engaged on, whether it's new when we release Microsoft lists as an update, or I've had it for three years. It's it's a it's a collection, and I, when you get the list home for the first time, it really aggregates from the Microsoft graph. Not to complicate the understanding of what it is, 
But the same as you go to OneDrive to see all of your recent files and all the recent activity around files, it takes on that same notion. The graph knows which lists you're active in, not just the groups that you're active in, but actually lists. And it wants to then showcase those, either ones that you've said, I want to favorite and track a little bit closer. That's what you see up here. Or recent because of your recent activity. I recently was at this list and I, I viewed or edited an item and you would see it here. And of course you can filter in on the different pivots that you would expect, but it is an aggregate of all your lists. Doesn't, uh, it does not have to only be a new one when Microsoft list is really. No, that's great. That's uh, yeah, so we're, yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense because as you said, a lot of investment, a lot of time spent uh, in those other SharePoint lists. It may still make sense just to, you know, leave those in place or add onto those or create purely within SharePoint, and um, so to be able to surface that information in one place makes sense. Well, one of the other things I, I was thinking of, and Noah and I were talking about before we we got started, before you joined us, uh, yeah, was around um, the. It's kind of the the second question or theme. That I've heard some questions around. I've been hanging out with the uh, project MVPs and doing their phone calls as well because that's yeah. uh, Mark. I don't know if you if we had this conversation. That's kind of how I found my way into SharePoint was from the project and portfolio management world, and I spent the first half yeah, of my yeah. career in that. Yeah. Um, and so that question is, well, well, how is this different? You know, because we've been talking about the new tasks app in Teams. Mm -hmm. And how yep. is this different from what's happening with To Do and the and the Tasks app, uh, and some of the integrations and the capabilities that are happening from that standpoint? Kind of a part two to that is because it, my my first seeing the demos, one of my first thoughts was, can I promote a list item to a task? Is there a way of maintaining the relationship between those two things and a mm -hmm. list item have a task and likewise a task? point to a specific list item. Yeah, uh, let me I'll tackle both. Uh, you know, the first one and you know if if the terminology more from an industry perspective helps, uh, among the Microsoft 365 app portfolio, um, when it comes to I think first looking through the lens of what helps me track and and achieve my tasks. Uh, and task being something that I would have assigned to me or I assigned to my and then when I click to finish it or or check it off the list with my team, it essentially goes anymore through the life cycle of how finished the task is. But usually once you 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 complete it, it's it's uh, there and then gone. But I think the broader category is task management. So I'm managing tasks. So for me, to do is where I see tasks that I assigned myself, or I can see tasks that were assigned to me in Planner, or if I had you know uh, flow. Email, but it's an aggregate of everything that I want to remind myself to do or somebody else has said assign that to Mark. But it is just that it's a task when I'm done, it's it's done. Um, so if that helps answer, I think what to do, what tasks in teams is and what planner is, you know, the aggregate of all three of them is this new offering in teams tasks which is that view of when I'm in Teams, I can see all of my tasks. And it's very similar to the UI of To Do, but it's very specific to within Microsoft 360. Planner then I think is then the real specific one. I'm working with my team on a project and I've right. been assigned X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah. But anyway, so if the broader notion of task management is where uh, To Do, Planner, and Teams task lives, List is more focused around managing information or maybe the category that we see in the industry, work management. And I think the real big difference between tasks and work is information that's ongoing. So it really doesn't go, may change over time. Mm -hmm. And you start to talk a really differently. We're not really just, we're not talking tasks at all. We're tracking um, physical assets. So one scenario might be an asset manager. I've got a team of people. I've got 500 trucks that come in and out of the delivery where all day, every day, every week, every month, and each individual truck may have one or two devices that gets checked out to them. So I keep a list of all my devices, all the trucks, and all the truck drivers, and I can manage 
you know, as the devices come in and out, whether they're broken, whether they need to be repaired, uh, or if it's checked out to a person, when is expected to come back, and I can write some logic on, you know, if this goes out on Monday, I expect it to be back on Friday. If not Friday, you know, raise a flag and notify somebody. Um, all of that is a real common list that we see people build. Tracks, as you know, uh, but to be clear, different columns of data, and it could be five, it could be 70. Um, we had one instance recently during the crisis time where one of our customers at real great scale tracked 70 fields of information per row, and they had thousands of row items, and they were changed by five or six main different teams, specifically in capacity going to be improved based on what they knew and each individual team or, or location reporting their capacity numbers. Um, so real separate set of scenarios, but I think to then ground out, at least I know it's a longer answer, but I, I think sometimes explanation when we've got some time, it helps, is list is also highly customizable. Some of the things are just out of the box, change of color, adjust the choice fields and you know how many drop down items are there what fields of information you will track, and then of course the forms themselves and the flows that you can then associate to all of the tracking. Um, when you go back to something like to-do, planner, or tasks, it's very fixed in the user interface, and that's a good thing. Uh, you know, the forms are fixed, the fields that you can track are relatively fixed, and they often aren't tied to a flow or a business process, it's as simple or as complex as you wanna make them. And with lists, it really is just a starting point. How much do you need to add process? How much do you need to convert the form to track or show certain pieces of information to different types of personas that may or may not sign in? And I think that last mile is when you need more, there's this uh, continuum of spectrum of the out of box for every every person every day. There's the makers or you know citizen developers that probably you know folks that are listening to this probably fit into fairly well, all the way up to then true custom applications. And there's other points of integration that lists take on with the Power Platform and of course the Microsoft Graph for real extensibility through the lists API. And that's a pretty broad spectrum, so we're not really gonna uh, always talk to all personas all the time. But when you get to what's really different, it's that tasks versus work management, the ability to customize and configure, and the different types of scenarios that always go beyond tasks that really get into asset management, um, event itineraries, and you know the different types of lists that we see people having made and will continue to make on that list backbone. I like the distinction you drew, Mark, because it, it uh plays off of duration. How long how long is this list item going to be around, right? And yep, yep. That's how yeah, you make if a you decision, think, whether it's a Yeah, and, it, and if something changes, let's just say status goes from in review to approved, uh, you know, in the concept of a task, that's not unusual, but it also might trigger a full-on workflow to notify the sales team and you know finalize the details that have been also in review to provide them with some set of information um, and then let's say you know sales cycle changes and things get deprioritized or whatever might change that status might go from approved to approved but some level of of difference where uh, you know as they're tracking what are the core priorities for this quarter the item doesn't go away but the priority on the item might have changed and so you still want to track it, manage it, but show it in a little bit of a different way. And, and that's something that, you know, when you layer in any type of information, think about all the video blogs that you guys have been doing, how you might just track and manage those over time. And gosh, we've got Build coming up. We heard from Microsoft they're going to be announcing updates to Cortex, Yammer, and Lists. Well, we are already planning these six things. Let's just adjust timing and maybe change our schedule a little bit. Uh, super easy to do and the tip of the iceberg as far as the scenarios. Um, but one one thing that I'll point out, uh, if I go just back to this one next slide, if you can still see my screen, is in this animation, you know, you get into this notion of templates. And just here on the left, you'll see the ones that at least we're currently working on. There's, there's certain adjustments we're doing to naming. But, you know, think about these kinds of things. Again, with that question in mind, what to use when? Would I build out an issue tracking task list 
maybe if you just have a handful. But if they're always an ongoing and as they come up, you need to track, you know, what's getting squashed by whom and what's getting addressed by different teams and, and when it gets addressed. How do you have that log of data for a dashboard in Power BI? You know, that's an extreme, but not too hard to build with lists. Uh, and again, we hope some of these scenario based templates help address the what do I use lists for? Not always to be uh, when do I use this versus that, but more when I turn to use lists, what can I do with it? And we want that to be super clear. And do we lose the the uh, notion of views, list views, or are they still around? No, no they're definitely around. Uh, they're, they're a big part of what we're doing. Um, we actually have a couple of new views that we're bringing, and I'll see if I can bring it up here. Um, so you've, you, you've known probably a lot of the different views that are out of the box. You can operate any view based on what column data you do or don't want to show. Um, but we are also bringing a calendar view, so any list item that has a date associated to it. You can visualize it to see you know, in calendar view. That's what you see here. And then there would be something on the grid view, which is a standard thing we've seen uh, in those past couple slides. There's also this notion of a, of a gallery view, something that's a little bit more card oriented. You can choose to design the card, uh, whether the image is on top or the bottom, if there's an image at all, what information appears. But one nice thing, uh, again, not, not a new thing in, in the notion of our industry, but new for to be able to do this very easily and be able to put this as a default view, if it's some, like an asset manager, that image of the asset might be pretty important on what we're talking about. And each card represents essentially a row of data visualized as a card. Um, so we're, we are keeping, you create your view and publish it, public and private views, be able to munge off of how you and how you uh, format and do all of that. But some of the out of box, I just want to pivot on with some of these new type views. Um, you'll be able to do that and essentially you're able to do everything you've been able to do up until now. Uh, a quicker time to market for the types of views that people did a lot of customization to achieve, like the calendar view, like a card layout type view, uh, and even more that we're working on um, to give people that flexibility of how do you want to represent your data. And I hope this even goes but other question, you know, these are things that you can do with lists that, uh, you know, aren't a core capability with some of the other offerings because the use cases, I think, are very different. I'm also curious, Mark, if you've got any reporting templates. So if you do want to get into those scenarios of aggregating uh, issues by product or whatever, right, or team, mm -hmm. Is there a template for that view, or or do you have to go and customize that? You know, a lot of the templates, just to be fair, are just a quick start to all the things that you can do. It, it It's obviously to help visualize what lists are capable of, uh, the different capabilities that you have to create the forms that you want, the logic behind that might not yet get a full power automate what follow that if then object, if this, then do that. Um, and some of the, the conditional formatting. So there are a lot of just to promote the art of the possible. Uh, and as it gets down to actually using them, of course, they're then very specific to what you're supposed to uh, be able to accomplish pretty, pretty easily. From a reporting perspective, obviously a lot of teams across a lot of different companies will report in different ways. Um, and I've seen use internally of lists are uh, just standard on tracking 15 different KPIs. This is how the OneDrive and the SharePoint team work. And they track, you know, green is good, yellow needs work, red is bad, and, and that changes over time and how they're tracking across those 15 different milestone, uh, uh, different KPI metrics. But I've seen other teams that track a lot more than 15, and they push the list data into uh, more of a Power BI dashboard. Uh, and everything in between is is what we want to be able to offer and not to be too shy on my answer. But, uh, you know, the, the types of templates that you would expect us to deliver, we hope to be both horizontal and vertical. There's some that we haven't yet talked about 
that we will share more about um, later in the summer that are a little bit more specific to different industries like healthcare, retail, and and others. Um, but they are just that uh, for us at this point in time, first party templates very much configured to the use case and what we know people commonly track in how they visualize. Um, but even with a template, you can further customize. You can add a field, you can configure the form even more. You'll soon be able to give a, a header or a footer to a form that doesn't require yet Power Apps, but when you need full customization of the form or richer type um, uh, flows that get a little bit more complex, there's always that avenue to go a little bit further. And I don't know if this really addresses kind of your question, but it's one point that might have been maybe the third thing that that you and Christian have been hearing. Um, and it's really this back to that continuum. Uh, this is not a real refined slide. It's just a talking point to have a discussion that when you look at Microsoft's full portfolio beyond Microsoft 365, you know, we want to enable everybody from simple out of box skill set that's really focused on the business, but maybe isn't as tech savvy. Uh, and I really fall into about here in between here to get into those folks that you know no power apps no power automate really start to build out rich business applications or what sometimes referred to as productivity apps to then real true custom development in a language for a developer that is leveraging the sharepoint framework and above with c sharp and all those things we really see this portfolio being what do you need now and and if you need to grow further or grow up across the organization you can really start to bring in uh, and build off of lists or maybe cut over and do more um, you know, with a different, a different set of tools. Uh, I'll be frank, this opens up a lot of different discussions, but it is a way that we're looking at when you think about what do I use, when and, and how. Um, you know, it might be a, a lot of different ways that Microsoft can support you, but to the point of you know, helping with reporting, absolutely. Um, if you need to better visualize that data that you're tracking in the list, maybe that's where we, you know, turn to something like Power BI. Um, but I think, you know, as you start to uh, get in and, and start to do what it is that you can do just out of the box with Microsoft Lists, that's where we'll start to be a little bit more focused on, well, what is it you're trying to accomplish? If it's a pretty straightforward, the scenario is supported by the template, or you can build and customize a little bit, with rules, views, filtering, you know, you can do that. And what you see here is kind of our new rules engine that I think will be some of the new capabilities that you can leverage to design and take further beyond the template, adhering to the scenario that you define for your business process, not for how Microsoft defines the template, you know, to be able to then do some of these things as easy as hopefully you can see here is just being able to write a sentence on when something happens, I, I need something else to happen. Um, and you're, you're um, hopefully being able to see that that value already today if you know what you're doing and tomorrow being able to do it much more simply and even more so either directly in teams or just not leaving the confines of working with your list and being able to configure it. That's spectacular, Mark. I Is Outlook a destination as well for maybe interactive list uh, updating or editing? Yeah, this is where I'll, I'll certainly not um, bet anything off on the roadmap by nature of we just haven't yet disclosed. But the notion is there, if you know about the fluid framework and you know about the value of the Microsoft graph, the idea going forward is that things within Microsoft 365 become more componentized or modularized. And we talk about that in the context of table data in a Excel, being able to be a part of a conversation easily. And the real value is that being able to update anywhere. But we also think about anything that is searchable by Microsoft Search, which then becomes available to the Microsoft Graph. It's based on what you do and who you work with. That notion of lists and list items are already there as a part of the search index. They will become more prominent in the Microsoft Graph. And as the Fluid Framework starts to take hold and become something that not only is available, um, but is something that we can then plug into as a part of the solution, I think you'll start to see the, the shareability and the usability of lists and list items or the forms that are associated with them that are more kept with wherever somebody had sent your, your eyeballs to. So 
imagine a form that somebody emails you and you fill out the form and, and you really don't leave the confines of the email inbox. That's that's pretty doable, right? Uh, in the in the concepts that are being promoted with the fluid framework, um, those are the types of design patterns that we want to adhere to. We'll we'll certainly get started with a lot of other tech that has been disclosed and released, but it's not a it's not a stretch because we are already with lists a part of the Microsoft Search experience, and as we refine and be able to build and give further capabilities uh, in what you can do based with these other what will I I, I do believe become common experiences to be able to add X or Y into a chat or an email or an other. Well, I was thinking um, as an example, Mark, like uh, Excel, being able to go in and Excel online yep. and at mention somebody as a comment or as a, as a note, and it yep. sets a notification, hits their outlook, they can click on it, jump right over and input the data that they want on that, that type of interaction with like, yeah. I think that's one of those, you talk about these common experiences that we're seeing, it's this con contextual collaboration across these various tools and workloads is uh, we're seeing more and more of that, which I think is incredibly powerful. Yeah, and I think you bring up a good point and maybe I sort of jumped ahead to just something that I think is, is going to be the future, which we've already talked about, so not really disclosing anything new. But to your point, the ability, what we talked about, you know, at, at our disclosure moment, is this new capability for comments, and I'll just run this here so you can see it. it it's pretty basic information, um, but to be able to do that on a list is is new, and to be able to do it at the item level is important. Now, this plays into both uh, information I can add to the list. So this comment that you see here is essentially like you're adding data to the column that now is listed as comment, visualized here, kind of side by side. But there's nothing that, that is a stretch for us to be able to work on and include at mentions. So to be able to more further pull somebody in uh, more easily so I could at mention both of you, one of you to bring you your attention to this list item. And there is a notion that we're already starting on commenting within Word or commenting in other places where you could up level the comment to a task. And so, again, nothing to disclose here except for that want to give you a platform that you can do all of this, again, without having to build it yourself. Uh, and if there was a notion in the future where on a list item you were to provide a comment with at mentioning somebody and assign them a task, that's that's not a stretch for what we want to achieve. So, you know, you know what um, made me think of, Mark, is in to do how you have the flagged email as a view, as a report. And so it's just another uh -huh. list in to do. It would it's not a stretch to think about any at mentions as a to do list. That's right. That's Which, and, and I think then that real clear distinction back to your your original question, the what to use when, is at that point in time, if if that is the direction that we go or our customers want us to go, that task is not a feature of lists. It is just that I'm assigning some content type. It has, happens to be a list item to somebody to do something. And the aggregate of that task would be alongside what it is that you experience in to do. My, my items that I assign myself, planner because a part of a broader project, I was assigned a couple of things. And this notion of somebody being able to add mention me wherever in Microsoft 365 and check a box that says make it a task. Um, you know, that, that happens to then play across all the different content types where then to do is the aggregate of, or if I'm in Teams, the Microsoft Teams tasks is that aggregate view of anything that has been assigned to me as a task. But it's not lists is a tasks management. It's just list will contribute a piece of information that you could maybe assign somebody a task to do something with. So it's a great, great distinction. It's certainly further down in the roadmap of lists if if we do take that on. But the notion that we're we're talking about today is of course we're we're wanting to be mindful to be able to comment but but do it more targetedly with an app mention. That'll come later in the roadmap. Um, but then that grow up story where you have this common pattern of how and when you at mention somebody and what you can do, that should be a common experience across Microsoft 365. And and again, without disclosing anything, that is a that is a goal of of the broader org across these different app teams. Yeah, I think that's uh, some some homework for uh, maybe Noah and I to do and go research in user voice, see what's out there, uh, go and try and get some community support for some of those types of ideas. 
But uh, well, I know hey, we're we're, hey. we're kind of at, at you know getting up to the end of the hour here. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask <laughs> you that to to share like where do people go to get more information? Of course, they can uh, if they type in now the um, you know Microsoft lists app. Most of the results that come back are all to do related, which is different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but just uh, how SEO is uh, is working because this is brand new. Yeah, yeah, so these are great. Yeah, to be frank, we're not in market yet with Microsoft Lists. Most of the new assets that I showed you visually. Um, again, reiterating, we are an evolution of SharePoint Lists, so you can <clears throat> already get started with building a list and trying some of these things. Those will get the Microsoft List capabilities. You'll soon see if you're in the targeted release early this summer or later this summer, depending on what release cycle you're in, you'll see the new list home appear. You'll be able to create lists with these new templates. You'll be able to do things in Teams. And But if you want an early look, of course, have a, a broader blog uh, that we wrote at the build timeframe that's out there. We have a resource center that will be a catch-all for blogs, for demos, for on-demand sessions. And of course, some of our customer stories that are starting to evolve. Um, and uh, the, a great video that my peer, uh, Michaela Barrett, put together if you really want to see a nice demo um, and, and a, some really nice way to ground what is Microsoft Lists, um, just go to aka.ms list slash whatever you find interesting here. Uh, but the demo video is something that's about 15 minutes long and it, she goes into really nice detail of what's new, how it builds onto SharePoint Lists and what are some of the, the different milestones to come? Um, but I'll just put on what's not on the list. If you do have any questions about Microsoft Lists, I'm not too hard to find uh, at Microsoft on Twitter at mcashman. That's with a K, M-K-A-S-H-M-A-N. Or if you channel it through uh, uh, Christian and um, any of the collab talk or anything, he'll make sure I get eyeballs on it. If we don't have um, questions that are answered, we'll make sure that they get answered. And you do have a podcast on didn't IntraZone, you guys did a session on this as well? Yeah, we did. You know, again, you, you try to choose what are the three things that we want people to walk away with. But if you go into the resource center, you'll see everything, demos, podcasts, blog. Uh, and we did do a unique IntraZone episode with Michaela Barrett and Lincoln Damaris, who are our lead Microsoft List PMMs. And if you've known them from the past, they're also our SharePoint list experts. So it really is a grow up story in how they're building and designing it. Uh, and it was a great discussion if you want to hear a little bit of the backstory. So uh, right. certainly always you should be subscribing to the Interzone. I mean, come on. I, but I yes, know. there I, is a new well, episode. Just, we'll, we'll assume that is, uh, uh, you know, everybody who's listening to this has already done that. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Mark, really appreciate your time today and uh, providing us a great overview of uh, the Microsoft List app. Very welcome. Thanks for having me and thanks for your interest, both to you and your audience, on Microsoft Lists and all the history in the past. And of course, lots to come, lots more to come. Right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. See ya.